in the beginning, I did not understand the transitions. It was not easy for me. Development was not easy for me because um, maybe because I had a fantasy like mindset, like many of us women do, you know, we think we're going to get in marriage and it's about sex and love and, and all hearts and Cupid and the arrows and all of these different things, but we don't really understand the work that it takes to be married, to be a wife. We don't understand the selflessness that we have to have. We don't understand the growth and the, and the development that we're going to have to go through. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Jackie, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Thank you so much for having me. It is a pleasure and an honor, and I'm so excited to be here. Oh, thank you so much. The pleasure is the pleasure is all. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to start off every conversation with just talking about um, how I come to know the person that I'm conversating with, mm-hmm. and this episode is no different. And so you guys who are listening and watching this, Jackie is one of my newer listeners to the podcast. I'm super, mm-hmm. super excited about that. And she, you know, she heard the episode with Tara Carissa and decided to fill out a form to be a guest on the podcast, read her over her information. And I was just like, yes, definitely got to have her on a podcast because her story, I think a lot of us will be able to relate to. Jackie is a mom, but even if you're not a mom, I think you'll be able to relate to it because I was able to relate to her story. You know, you got, <laughs> I don't have kids yet. So <laughs> if I'm able to relate, you guys can too. So thanks again, Jackie, for being here. <laughs> Thank you so much, girl. Absolutely. So let's start off with okay. talking about that moment where you realized that, you know, your life was transitioning from what side society deems as normal. I'm doing air quotes mm-hmm. for those who are listening. <laughs> We're doing air quotes around normal. And I really wanted to start the conversation there because I think change is something that a lot of us battle with. A lot of mm-hmm. people battle with change, even though that's probably one of the one things that's constant in life, period, is mm-hmm. change. But we mm-hmm. battle with it all the time. But you seem to kind of like embrace it a little bit. But I'm gonna let you <laughs> let you tell your story. So can you talk to us about? Well, that? does it does it seem that way? Does it seem that you know I'm just willing, you know, and it was an easy thing to embrace? You know, I would say no, definitely not. Um, you know, always growing up, I knew that I was different. I knew that I was set apart. I knew that I had a calling on my life. I knew that God had a purpose for me. I knew that I was a purpose person that always moved differently. Um, However, I didn't always make the right choices. Um, Just kind of getting into some things as I was growing up, but God has always had his hand on my life. Um, And so I just knew I've always kind of had that connection there. Um, However, heavy transitions began to take place in my life. Of course, when I got married and pregnant and became a mom, um, those kind of transitions, I really didn't understand. You know, I didn't understand how different my life would be um, when I went from being single to being married. I didn't know or realize how different my life would be from being um, a woman with no children to a woman with children. And on top of that, a woman with children, I have a son on the autism spectrum. I have a daughter with ADD. And so, um, In the beginning, I did not understand the transitions. It was not easy for me. Development was not easy for me because um, maybe because I had a fantasy like mindset, like many of us women do, you know, we think we're going to get in marriage and it's about sex and love and, and all hearts and Cupid and the arrows and all of these different things. But we don't really understand the work that it takes to be married, to be a wife. We don't understand the selflessness that we have to have. We don't understand the growth and the, and the development that we're going to have to go through. We really don't understand the experience of marriage. We don't understand the experience of motherhood. We don't realize that, you know, we won't get to go everywhere that we want to go. You know, now our focus is our family. 
you know, our marriage and our children. So I wouldn't say transition was easy for me, but I have learned to accept it. I have learned to accept the wisdom of it, um, the, the divine calling of it. And so just really, you know, kind of getting in that flow. And it takes time, but you have to be willing to get there. Oh my God. I see you guys, you see why I needed to have her on the podcast. I love that because even though you said that it wasn't an easy transition for you, I love right. that, that you recognize that there, it was a transition. Right. You recognize that change was happening and that it wasn't a bad thing. It just means uh -uh. that life was going to look a little different and that right. it was okay. And with that comes wisdom right? Mm -hmm. And with that, mm -hmm. it's a divine purpose still, right? Because God is the orchestrator of all things. So even right. though you saw that from going from single to marry and from, you know, no children to children, even though these was huge, you know, transitions and really, mm -hmm. you know, great moments of change in, in your life, you still saw the beauty in that. And right. that's what I really hope people get and it sinks in because right. change doesn't have to mean it's a bad thing. Right. It but can I say this? Be. Right. But you have to be um, willing to get there and you have to understand. I think what it is, um, when I first got married or first became a mother, I didn't really have anybody to teach me about change and tra transformation. The only thing that I saw in my mother was that she kept going, no matter what she went through, um, no matter what situations, maybe in her marriage or, you know, um, I'm the baby. So um, I just saw her kept, kept going. So I really didn't understand the aspect of transition. I didn't, you know, nobody taught me that. Life had to teach me that. Being in a marriage had to teach me that. Being a mother had to teach me that. Mm -hmm. So um, I think if women have somebody to let them know that and be honest with them and teach them that in the beginning, mm -hmm. they can handle tr the transitions a lot better. Um, mm -hmm. I can remember one day I was sitting at the kitchen table with my husband and I just started crying. I didn't know what in the mm -hmm. heck was going on. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just bawling and I really can't remember everything that I was talking to him about, but I felt like, you know, something was wrong. I felt like my life was falling apart and all of these crazy things. And it was like something in me. And I know it was God. I know it was wisdom mm -hmm. said into, said to me, um, your life isn't, is not ending? It's just transitioning. And you mm. just got to get into the flow of that transition. Mm. And so if women, because I, I, I coach uh, moms, women, uh, moms, <laughs> wives and women, if we have somebody to help them in the beginning of that process, while you're dating, while you're engaged, and even at the beginning of your marriage, then you may be able to transition a lot better and, and know and learn how to get in that flow and know that everything isn't, I, I'm dying. And I'm dying moment. You get what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make it. I'm going to, you know, so I just think that we have to have those people to coach us and support us through those moments. But we have to know who to connect with in order to do that. I 100%, I 100% agree. And for those of us who, who are not comfortable with necessarily coaching someone else, one mm -hmm. of the ways that you can do what Jackie just said is to just share your story and share your journey. Don't be right. afraid to talk about how you're feeling and, and what you're going through with, with someone else. Because mm -hmm. one of the, the best ways that people learn is by example. Like people are watching you, whether you want them to right. or not. People are watching you and it's not just your kids, you know, but it could be your siblings, your cousins, hell, it could mm -hmm. be your mama and your auntie, it could be your right. co-worker or your neighbor next door. There's always mm -hmm. somebody watching you, just seeing how you are, you know, flowing and going from one stage to the next. You know, right. I can, you know, I can truly relate because I am the oldest, actually, of all my okay. siblings. And I have about 13 siblings. And I was born and raised in the projects right outside of Chicago. First generation, everything. So to go from Chicago Heights projects to Clark Atlanta University when I went to school in Atlanta, Georgia, that mm -hmm. was such a huge transition. Hey, family. So real quick, I wanted to pop in and share some exciting news with you. The Living Out Truth podcast has received its first donation, and we are 
so excited and overjoyed about it. Family, you guys have been showing up, showing out, and just pouring in the support. And we are so overwhelmed, so blessed, and so appreciative of you. And I needed to take a moment to say thank you. Just in case you had no idea that you can support the Living on Truth podcast through a monetary donation, I want to let you know, yes, you can. All you have to do is go to the show notes of any episode and click on the donate button to give your monetary donation. Whatever God places on your heart to give is exactly what we will receive. And we just thank you for your kindness. Now, back to the conversation. For me, because all my life I lived in the projects, and then all my life everybody that I knew lived in the projects. My mama was born right. in the projects. My grandmama was born in the projects. Everybody was born in the projects. So to go from here to there, if you will, it was such. I was just like, oh my god, like it was so overwhelming. And even though in my little area it was predominantly black, but you know we had some Hispanics and Puerto Ricans, you know, but it was still predominantly black. It was still like a culture shock to me when I went to right. America. Mm-hmm. Because it was like these black people were doing it's on a it's on a whole nother level for these black people that I grew up with, you know. Right. But it was it was hard because like you say, I didn't have anybody to to show me or you right. know, teach me the you know about the the transition. And so the way that I paid it for it was to just tell my my sister everything, like everything that I was going <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> going on, I would you know tell her so she can know what to what to expect. So I think that's, I think that's a good idea to, to coach other women and just to show your story. Another reason right. I do, another reason why I do the, um, the podcast. So you mentioned, um, briefly that your son is, is autistic and he's on mm-hmm. the spectrum, right? Right. When you received that news that, I mean, did you experience mom guilt when you when you heard that news about your child being being on a spectrum? And if so, or if not, you know, tell us if you did mm-hmm. or didn't. But if you did feel mom guilt, how did you overcome that? Well, honestly, I didn't necessarily feel mom guilt. However, okay. I did feel sad, you mm-hmm. know, because that's that's shocking news. Because all of us want our children to be so-called normal, right? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, now, however, uh, my husband did have guilt because he kind of felt like those traits came, from, that trait specifically, and even with both children, you know, came from him. So I think he was the one that more um, had the guilt more so than I did. But I did have my moment of sadness. However, um, I don't see my son's disability or autism as something uh, like a defeat. And I really even don't see it as a disability. I just see it as a difference. So mm-hmm. I see it as me just having to teach him differently, me mm-hmm. having to respond to him differently, me having to um, communicate with him in a way that he can understand. Um, it's, it's me having to look at his strengths more so than look at his weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And so what we do in our household with our children is we um, encourage them towards their strengths. Like my son, he's very detailed. I can tell him to do A, B, and C, and he'll do A, B, and C. So he's very smart in his own way. Same thing with my daughter. My daughter is great with the arts. She loves to dance and paint and do all of these things. She struggles with school. She has ADD, which is, it's hard for her to focus, yeah. you know. However, we encourage her in dance. We encourage her in the arts. So what we do is we don't see our children's disability as a defeat. We just see it as a difference and we work with them on that. And so, so again, we focus on their strengths. However, we are also helping them with their weaknesses. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love the fact that you focus on their strengths. I love the fact that you don't look at, you know, their disability as a disability, but as right. a, as a difference. Because that's, mm-hmm. I mean, because to be honest, that's what it is. You know, right. You know, the world. I don't know if this is a if the if the map is correct. You know, ninety percent of the world, you know, see things one way, but just because ten percent see it a different way, doesn't right. necessarily mean that they're 
disabled, if you will. That's just me. Right. We have to think differently. We have to right. interact a little, a little differently. Again, a, another way that we don't want to do something different outside of what we consider to be normal, or do mm -hmm. or or connect with somebody outside of our our comfort zone. Right. You know? um wow so your husband felt guilt you know we yeah. don't we, we, we don't talk about the guys feeling right that much right you know, uh -huh. it's, funny that you, it's funny that you say that because you know hubby and i and this is something that i have shared in previous conversations so it's not necessarily new but hubby and i have fertility issues right okay and it's um something that we are dealing with you know together but it has really hit my husband. Of yeah. course, naturally, people know that it's, it's I'm going to feel some type of way, right? I, of right. Course, I have an emotional breakdown. But you guys, it's my husband has a, <laughs> an emotional, his emotional breakdown is, is on the same level of mine or maybe right. levels above, but nobody talks about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We don't talk about our, our husband's feelings or men in general, like their feelings and the fact that they feel like when we hurt, they hurt too. Right, right. And that's, that, yeah, and that's one thing yeah. that I really appreciate about my husband. He's very, um, in touch with his emotions and feelings <laughs> he's not afraid to express them so um you know that that's one great thing that i that i love about him and real quick um before we move on i want to say this um to the moms out there that may have a child with a developmental delay or add or some kind of mental illness or mental health issue regardless of all that your child has a destiny so that's what you have to believe, you know, just like if it was a child that didn't have any disability and your child does, your child still has a destiny. So don't give up on your child. Advocate for your child. Make sure that they're getting the services that they need in school. Make sure that they're getting the counseling or even some kids um, are on medication management. And, you know, I'm, I'm not, and I'm not saying putting, you know, your kids on medication, but what I'm saying is make sure that you're advocating for your child because they have a destiny. I see a lot of parents, um, because I also, I work with um, youth with behavior challenges. You know, that's what I do during the day and I work with their families, making sure that they have the services that they need for the, so that the child can be successful. Mm -hmm. And so you see so many parents really kind of, oh, my child is disabled or they have this and they kind of give up, not realizing that the child still has a destiny. So I want to encourage parents out there that regardless of what your child is going through or, you know, um, behavior issues or disability, whatever it is, your child has a destiny. So make sure that you're focusing on that because God is holding you accountable to making sure that you're guiding your child into that destiny, regardless of how you think and feel about that child just because they have a disability. You know what? Thank you for saying that because you're absolutely right. Every child, every person that is born has mm -hmm. a purpose. If you are a, a Christian and you believe in God, you have to believe in the fact that God has given each and every one of us a purpose. And right. we all are, are born in sin. So even if your child is born and they're, you know, they're um, displaying behavior issues, like Jackie said, don't give up on a child because that child right. still has, is, he or she still have a purpose you know right and, and god can literally change our lives in the blink of an eye in an instant right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we just have to have faith we have to we have to believe and we have to be the best advocate for not only our children but our, ourselves as well right so right. how did it affect your faith when you first found out that you know your your son was on a spectrum and then your your daughter has is is add like how did that affect your your faith um to be honest it didn't it didn't affect my faith because okay. again, I'm a woman of purpose and I believe in purpose. And like I said, I've always been different. And so just because I heard the words that my child, my children are diagnosed with these certain things, it just, it didn't really affect my faith. It just shifted my mindset again to um, focusing on, okay, well this, this is going on with them, but I know that they have a purpose. I know that they have a destiny and I know that they're smart in their own right. It's just, in what area are they, you know, smart in, you know? Yeah. So, um, and just pushing them towards it. So I don't, it really didn't affect my faith, to be honest with you. What would you say to someone who 
who was in, who's in your shoes, mm-hmm. but your faith did waver a little bit because we're human, right? Right, and, right. And, it's, and, it's, and it's and if that's you, then it's it's okay because it's you know, okay. I, yes, I, yeah. Because yeah, I have if been that, that gone through that. Mm-hmm. Right. No. If like you you said, we're all human, right? Mm-hmm. And so if that's you, it is okay. Be patient. Number one. Um, Sit in that, that 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 feeling that you're feeling. Sit in it. Um, think about it. Process it. Know that it's okay. Um, begin to work yourself through it. But at the end of it, I would just again say, know that your child has a purpose and a destiny. It's gonna be okay. It's okay to feel how you're feeling. You know, it's okay for you to have that doubt. You know, your you know, maybe your your trust ha- in, in God has decreased. Your faith in God has decreased because of the news that you you've heard. That is okay. God loves you. He's going to work with you. Um, but the end of your process of being angry, of being sad, of being depressed, whatever it is because of the news that you heard, I just want to encourage you to get to the end of that tunnel. Make sure that you're grabbing onto that light. And if you need somebody to help you to process that, you know, if you need a counselor or a friend or whatever, somebody to help you to uh, process that situation then make sure that you're doing that yeah i 100 percent agree and you know you guys if if you're feeling that way let me just tell you this god will never give up on you right He's always chasing you he will always sit there and wait he doesn't care how many times you you fall away as long as you keep coming back and you have a hunger and you're building a relationship with him he will always right right so don't beat yourself up if you have if you always down in your faith it's okay you know it's okay because yeah god knew that you was going to feel that way he knew that you was going to doubt at that time before you even know so right. you already have measures you know in place just know that you can always go back to him he's always right. he's always there and he's gonna always wait for you with with open arms that was let me say that, this mm-hmm. i'm sorry can i say this mm-hmm. now just because i didn't waver in my faith Mm-hmm. we have to learn as women you may be stronger at something than what I am right so in that instance my faith didn't waver but there may be something else that may cause my faith to waver and so that's why as women we have to catch each other um in our strong points and really be able to say okay well this was difficult for me but it, my sister over there she's strong in that so I'm going to grab onto her and vice versa so I'm going to encourage you, don't compare yourself, your struggle to another woman's struggle. Just because my faith didn't waver in that doesn't mean that I haven't had my moments and other things where my faith wavered and that I didn't have self-doubt. So I just want to encourage you to don't compare your journey to somebody else's. God is going to meet you where you are. Absolutely. And that's another reason why, you know, I, I started the podcast because for me, my story is I survived sexual abuse. I was sexual abused mm. by my father for eight years. And so my business, is Sister's Truth, is based off of self-awareness. And I share a lot um, about my journey. And so a lot of women thought, because I share so much of my journey, a lot of women thought that I only coached other women who had, who has experienced sexual abuse. And yeah. I just let them know that. That's, no, that's, that's not the case at all i share my story because there are so many women who haven't healed from that and there are adult women and they're still holding on to it so i just want to right. show you that number one you can heal you can have you know successful relationships you can love yourself there is a purpose for you right but i was just like you know what let me do a po- the podcast where i'm mm-hmm. sitting down and talking to other women because like you said I don't want nobody to compare. I don't want nobody to say, well, I wasn't, you know, sexually abused. You know, the only thing that happened to me is that my mother died when I was seven. Or well, the only thing that happened mm. is not that it's, it's the only thing. Like, right. mama, whatever is traumatic for you is, is traumatic. Like, right. there's no, oh, my trauma is more traumatic. Than, no, it's, it's trauma is trauma is trauma is trauma. Right, That's what I was right. Doing, in, in my opinion. So, right. Yeah. So I'm glad you I'm glad you said that because that's one of the, the reasons why I have these conversations, right? Because we can always find a glimmer of hope in someone else's journey. We can find an answer or a solution that we're looking for in someone else's journey because God uses us, uses our journey, right. answers other people's 
prayers. Right, right. Where right. I need to operate from, from a place of purpose. You know, Jackie, you said a whole bunch. There's so many different facets to your life, right? How did you not lose your identity? Because there are moms mm -hmm. out there who haven't even gone through or experienced half the things that you have, who have, I'm doing air quotes, y'all, normal children, and they still <laughs> lose their, their identity. How are you mm -hmm. able to, to hold on to your identity? Well, let me tell you something. In order to gain something, you have to lose it. So I wouldn't necessarily say that I did not lose it at one point in time in my life. I just had to gain it back, right? So one day I woke up mm -hmm. and um, I said, what in the heck is going on with my life? Who am I and what am I doing? Because I got so consumed in motherhood and marriage, right? And I got so consumed in religion and church and all of these things. So what I had to learn how to do was number one, um, the way that I got myself back together and got myself back was number one, prioritizing my life. Okay. Prioritizing my day, learning how to tell people no, knowing what was important for my life, which is myself, my husband, my children, of course, working, God, you know, these things are important for me. So number one, prioritizing my life. Number two, making sure that I'm praying. Okay. Because I need that meditation because there was a time in my life. And I still have to work through it that I dealt with depression, severe depression, especially after my, my father died of a tragic accident. Mm -hmm. um, I dealt with the depression, anxiety, fear, suicidal thoughts, and all of these things. So I had to learn how to pray, and I still do, because I have those moments. Um, I was doing a video this morning um, about how at the beginning of the year, um, I didn't realize that, but God just gave me this, this, this certain kind of strength and this newfound relationship with him, because I didn't realize at that moment that after I had lost my cousin in this, uh, the past November of 2019, that in February, I would lose my nephew in March. I would lose my oldest sister. And this past what? Saturday, my grandmother passed away. Oh my God. And so I didn't realize um, that I would need that strength and that, that, that newfound relationship with God, but he knew. So it was nothing that I did really in order to gain it. He just deposited it in me because he knew what I was about to face, right? Mm -hmm. And so just having that prayer relationship with him, talking to him daily in order to center myself and to make sure that fear isn't overtaking my life, making sure that depression isn't driving me, making sure that I'm keeping any kind of anxiety levels down, that I'm not getting in a place of suicidal thoughts, okay? So um, making sure that I'm having that prayer life. And I encourage anybody, if you can at least do five or 15 minutes a day just to center yourself, do that. Then number three, um, um, making sure that I'm setting boundaries, which is very important. So um, being mindful of who I'm connecting myself with. I don't want to be around you if you're a gossip. I don't want to be around you if you're somebody that's angry and you're always jealous and you're always starting mess. So who am I connecting myself to? Making sure that I'm setting those boundaries so mm -hmm. those things don't get in my spirit and drain me. Mm -hmm. um, and number four, making sure that I'm pursuing my purpose. So I just believe whatever it is that God has placed in my heart and my hands for me to do, I need to pursue that and I need to do that. So I'm making sure that I connect myself with like-minded people. And then number five, I'm making sure that I'm not being a people pleaser. Because at one point in my time in my life, I had a big problem with that. But then I had to get over it and realize that people are going to think of you how they want to think of you and they're going to treat you how they want to treat you. It's, it's, it doesn't matter how much you're trying to please them mm -hmm. to get them to like you you know, it's, it, it's just not going to work. They're still going to think how they want to think. So again, number one, prioritizing your life. Number two, making sure that you're praying. Um, number three, setting boundaries. Number four, pursuing your purpose. And then number five, not being a people pleaser. That is how I, I got back to that place of, you know, getting my identity back. You guys, if, if you are listening to this, I'm going to need you to go over to Facebook or to YouTube and watch the video. Because when I tell you, Jackie don't look like what she had been through since November, 
<laughs> okay she does not look like what she just said she went through you know october of 2018 jackie my brother was killed you know mm. suddenly um and we it took us until like the middle of november to kind of get all his mm -hmm. papers in order and things like that so uh i was away from my husband you know for several weeks and when i got mm -hmm. back you know, I took time off, you know, um, to, to grieve my brother in the process, because when I mm -hmm. was right in the middle, taking care of all his affairs with my family, I didn't have the time to grieve the loss of my brother. So once right. I was home and settled, I was like, you know, let me give myself time. But obviously the time that I gave myself, it wasn't enough because the first like six, seven months of, of 2019, I was in this Funk. It was like I just had this cloud over me and I did mm -hmm. absolutely nothing. And I would, you know, study and I would, you know, pray and, and my normal routine of things, you know, that I that I normally are my go to when I'm feeling bad to kind of like rejuvenate myself. It just wasn't working. Yeah, it was it was not working at all for me. So I had to literally get back into the therapist chair to work things out and realize that I was still grieving the loss of of my brother. So right. So when I say that Jackie doesn't look like <laughs> what she's <laughs> going through, you know, I I I mean that because she was just so. Yeah happy and, and and lively right now considering that you just lost somebody on on saturday like yeah close people yeah. in your life these are close people so these are not like yeah third and fourth cousin i could say that third and fourth cousin is right right you, you understand what i you understand what I'm saying. i get so you i get a, you yeah yeah that's a that's a lot so wow amazing 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 so let me so let me ask you this jackie because mm -hmm. you know you are uh, a parent of children that have special needs um you are also a military wife and you talked earlier about you know how your your husband experienced you know a little bit of guilt and we talked a little bit about how you know we don't necessarily talk about the emotions of our of our husbands or men right in mm -hmm. our in our life but let me ask you this with all of these things going on in your life how do you stay emotionally and romantically connected to husband because for a lot of couples that will split split a couple up oh like, yeah you know so how do you stay <laughs> how do you stay connected with your hubby um well I'll, I'll be honest with you um sunday as far as you know we, we learned my grandmother passed saturday night mm -hmm. and sunday i dealt with anger and frustration mm. monday i was okay today very emotional right i know you can't tell but today was a very emotional day mm -hmm. i just think that um you have to be willing to stay connected mm. It, it, it's never easy and even being a military spouse um sometimes my husband is very busy because not only is he a military spouse but then he's he works at the church and then he has military duties and then he just got promoted to another job and so he has a lot you know on his plate but i just think it's effort and i'll even praise my husband on this he's very good about taking the effort to be with his family and to be with his wife. Mm -hmm. He's not gonna allow anybody to mess with his time when it comes with his family. So that is something that's very important to him. And I thank God to have a man like that where family and his spouse is very important. I could just tell that he's a man that he doesn't wanna lose that connection with, with his wife. Um, he wants to have that love of his wife and he wants to give that love. And so you just have to have that desire. You have to have that want to, um, even when you're mad and you're angry and you're, you know, you're going through um, a, a, a disagreement or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it, it's not going to just be easy. Again, you have to want to, and, and then you, you have to just do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for this quarantine time. Okay. So I'm from Louisiana for those Girl, of you that don't know. Because and I know a lot of people are mad. I'm from Louisiana and our governor just did a um 
an interview yesterday where he extended our stay at home time till May 15th. So that puts me working from home and that puts him working from home. And so this time we've just been able to bond and you guys, we don't get that all the time. Mm -hmm. Just being able to settle down and to love on each other and spend time with each other and Netflix and chill and eat a little junk food and do, we don't always get to do that. So I'm just grateful for this time. But um, again, I would encourage you, yes, things that you, you're going through and, and like my death, the death of my grandmother, Sunday, I didn't want nobody bothering me. I didn't want no children, no husband, nobody. But he was nice enough to see that and to say, do you need your space? If you do, I'm going to give that to you. But you have to want to love on your partner, even mm -hmm. when things are rough. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I love the fact that you, you say that your husband set boundaries because that's exactly what he does because the uh -huh. fact that he doesn't allow anybody to come in between, you know, family time and wifey time. Okay. Right. <laughs> That's how we be. That's how we be setting those setting those boundaries, and we don't we don't hear you know we don't hear that enough. You know we right. talk a lot about how you know guys are, are are dogs and they do this and they do that, right? But we need to hear more about our good men out there, right? And we need to and praise them, right? right? And we need <laughs> to praise them. You're absolutely right. We need to praise them. I'm I'm gonna have to have more male guests on on the podcast so they can come on and talk about it and we can hear things from from their perspective as well. right right because you're right you have to you have to make an effort you know that's one of the things that attracted me to my husband because like mm -hmm. i said earlier i'm i'm the oldest and so i'm first generation everything and so when i met my husband he saw that immediately how i was always helping other people right right to a default, you know, at, at sometimes, Jackie, to be completely honest with you. But it was something that he said to me. One day he told me, he was just like, you know, Keisha, let me take on your, your burdens. You know, let me carry your world for you today. Right. Because you know, you're carrying it for everybody else, but let me carry that for you. And nobody mm -hmm. had ever said that to me before. Nobody had ever said that right. to me before. And so the fact that he said that, that was what really drew me in to him. Cause I'm like, okay, so this is somebody who sees, notices, and then care enough to lend a helping hand. Right. And like you said, it's never easy when you in, you know, when you're in a marriage. Right. When you have two people who are willing to do the work, it becomes a little easier. Right, right. Two people willing to do the work. When you have two people who are willing to fight for the relationship and fight for and fight for the marriage. Right, right. I yeah. um I have a, a coaching call um on my app that I have and it's called uh, marriage ain't perfect but it's worth it. Mm. Nothing about marriage is gonna be perfect, but if you can find that person that's gonna love you for you, number one, that accepts mm -hmm. you for you, mm -hmm. um, then it's it's worth it. It's worth it. It really is because a person like that will be willing to walk through the fire with you yeah you know one thing that i know with my husband every difficult milestone that we have gone through it has made us love each other even the more and that's that's crazy that's crazy i love that marriage is not perfect but marriage is also unique this is something yes. that i had to that i had to i had to learn marriage is unique to you the couple that's in right marriage. You know, it's no secret that uh, that I'm in that I'm in therapy because I'm a huge advocate of of therapy. And right. I was talking to I was talking to my my therapist, and you know, marriage came up because she was just checking in, doing a normal check in because I'm seeing her doing COVID times, and we got on on my marriage, and so she helped me to realize that marriage is unique to me and Jeremy. That's right. It. So this idea that I have of, of, of marriage, you know, not to say that I need to like let it go, but I need to <laughs> accept the fact that my marriage is different from what society deems as the perfect marriage. If you right. Will. And mm -hmm. that's okay. As long as it's working for 
me and Jeremy. Right. Because, you know, I didn't grow up with the perfect, you know, example of marriage. I mean, who did, who did, right? And so right. just not having that, that image or what to expect or anything, I came in with these preconceived notions and it's just <laughs> like, <laughs> Baby, you just need to 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 figure out what's going on between you and Jeremy and make that work. And that's right. Okay. And that it's okay. It's okay because marriage is is unique. Right. So, I talked about how I go through therapy because that's a part of my support team. How uh -huh. my therapist is a part of my support team because I'm a 100 advocate of just having you know, a, a support team. And I say team intentionally because I, sometimes we think support systems, just your best friend or just your husband. Right, right, right. Just right. those two people. So talk to us about your support team. Do you have a support system in, in place? How extensive is your support system? Well, I can say this. I've definitely gone through counseling before. Um, okay. And the great thing about it, it was like a guy, it, it's kind of like something about counseling just opens something up in you, okay? Um, something about it just l lets you know that the way you're thinking, it is okay, right? Mm -hmm. Because again, we try to compare our lives to what we have learned and what we have been taught and think that it's right or we think that it has to be this way um so um i've definitely had a period where i have gone through counseling and it was just an eye opener and just it unlocked something in me um normally my support system aside from my husband which i'm super grateful for is really my family mm. you know yeah. um and as you can see, in the past five months, us having the four deaths, mm -hmm. it has been a lot on all of us. And so it has really caused us to lock in even the more mm -hmm. and to really um, appreciate each other, appreciate the family dynamic. Um, now I'm down to one sister. That it was two. Now I'm down to one, but it brings us closer together. And then the sister that I have, she had three children. Now she's only down to two, you know, the one, you know, the sister that's still living. And so mm -hmm. I just think, um, death has increased our family bond and our family dynamics and how it is so important for us to be there for one another. So I believe, um, just really at this time, my support system is really, you know, my family and friends who, you know, that I can count on to, when a day they can see that I need a break from my autistic son or my ADD daughter, they say, Hey, and I don't trust everybody to take care of, especially my son, because there are certain things that, you know, he kind of goes through, mm -hmm. but just having, um, a kind of a friend that say, okay, look, just bring the kids over, drop them off. You finish doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Things like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, supporting. Mm -hmm. So, I would say that uh, my family and just really um, close friends would be my support system. People who know, who know me, um, they know when something is wrong. They know when, you know, I need to let my guard down and not try to be so strong. Um, I really appreciate my family and friends, you know, that come in my life and surround me like that. So I would say they're my support system. That's that's awesome because normally, uh, well, not normally, but most times we hear how death tears families apart. So mm -hmm. the fact that your family is finding strength in this is amazing. I, I yeah, think it's amazing. How are you guys coping? Because this is COVID times right now with social distancing and things like that. Like, how are you guys? Oh coping? yeah, look. Wait. I think we're coping okay. Um, we yeah. stay in communication with each other pretty much every day. We actually have like a group um, Facebook chat where we're nice. on there all the time, encouraging each other. We're sending funny stuff. We're calling each other so we can see everybody and what each other is doing. But yeah, we've just been staying in communication with everybody pretty mm -hmm. much every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm grateful for that because it's something that I need. Um, it's not easy working from home as well as trying to teach children. I don't know. Well, you say you don't have children, but 
it's crazy trying to work from home as well as sit your children down at their laptops and making sure that they're doing what they need to do. And so it's definitely, definitely not an easy time. You know, I would say this, um, when my sister passed, it mm-hmm. was kind of the beginning of um, the COVID thing, you know, from in my state. And it was down to 50 people being able to gather. And a lot of people didn't even show up for my sister's funeral. So that was difficult. And now my grandmother has passed and, you know, we're still in this COVID thing. And so, you know, we're not even going to be able to be, uh, to sit down and really have a funeral. You know, it just has to be like a viewing or, you know, like a burial and things like that. So it can be difficult when you really want to celebrate your loved one and really spend that time when they've passed away, not to really be able to do that like you want to, but, you know, we're just hanging in there and, um, doing the best that we can and giving God praise for the time they were able to live on this earth. And we're learning from their lives at this time. So, you know, I'm just grateful for that. I'm so happy that you're able to find gratitude in in all of this because it's the gratitude that is going to, in addition to prayer, of course, is what's going right. to help you to, to be strong and, and maintain because, you know, this is a time where we need to come together. Death outside of COVID is a time it's, where we it's just crazy to just, you know, come together. But the fact that you guys are putting in that that extra effort yeah. is, is amazing. You know, and, and thank God for, for social media. Because could you imagine going through COVID times without social media? Well, without right. conversing and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. So crazy. Like, you know, it's hard. I know people are complaining. Actually, you know, I'm married to an introvert. So we actually, you know, love the, the good. Right. <laughs> right. I'm an introvert. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh good. No. Oh, yeah. So, but yeah, but without social media, it'll, it'll be a lot more um, hard to deal with, but, you know, definitely something to still be grateful in this time. You know, Jackie, I really enjoyed our conversation today. You are amazing. Thank you, girl. I enjoyed talking to you. I, I, can I be honest with you? It's yeah. really therapeutic to be able to sit here and talk and you know just to encourage and just to have this free open um and honest transparent space you know just feeling comfortable being able to share with you and your audience and so even though today has been an emotional day and i still feel the emotions talking to you i'm just grateful to be able to you know have that time um it's kind of like a sense of peace you know and your spirit is a very peaceful one so i'm just grateful for that Man, thank you. Thank you so much. You just gave me, you just gave me chills, you know, because <laughs> this is, I've, I've been told over and over again how uh, I should do a podcast. I should do a podcast and people have been, you know, telling me that there's something about when I have conversations with people mm-hmm. and I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was a thing. Honestly, I started the podcast. One of, another reason why I started the podcast is because people were, were asking for it. And, you know, I'm always talking about how we need to operate in purpose, right? But right. purpose is, is, a, is, it can evolve, right? It's an evolution. Mm-hmm. Purpose is not necessarily one faceted. And it's like, right. People are, are reaffirming my gifts it's just you know it just warms my heart and it gives me goosebumps because i know i'm operating from a place of purpose right you know right everyone to do that so everyone can just feel this you know Mm -hmm. so it's it's my passion to to help everybody to get there but before you get out of here two more questions i want to know okay give us a, a book or audible book recommendation because i'm addicted to audible that you have read or listened to that has impacted your life in some way. Okay, this this is this may sound crazy. <laughs> Maybe not. No. Um hopefully it's not too spiritual, but um unmasking the spirit of Jezebel and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, unmasking I've read unmasking I think it's either unmasking the spirit of Jezebel or Unmasking the Jezebel Spirit is <laughs> either one, but it's by John Paul Jackson. Okay. Okay, it's on Amazon. You can uh, either get, you know, order a paperback or you can read it on your Kindle if you have a Kindle on your phone or your, you know, iPad or whatever. Okay. Um, but the reason why I've read that book several times, this time I read it because um, 
I don't I, I don't know if you know anything about the Jezebel spirit, but I'm just, I'm, I'm going to try to say this very quickly, but um just about the woman in the Bible, but you know just how controlling and manipulative she was and you know just very deceptive and all of these things. But I began to read it because women that have been raised by strong mothers who may have dealt with the Jezebel spirit. I'm talking about the mother. Um I believe that it's very important for us to examine ourselves as the children because we can carry that seed that our mother carried that may not have been a very good seed or, you know, a very good spirit when it deals with manipulation, especially you women that are married, you know, if you're controlling or manipulative or whatever, um, you have to check it because it, maybe it was something that your mother carried that it got on you and now you need to be healed and delivered from it. So it's, you know, I've kind of just, like I said, been rereading it and kind of going through it in that kind of manner so I can look within myself to see where are some areas in my life where I could have taken some things that my mother has dealt with and that I need to learn, I need to deal with. I need to see them in myself, deal with them, be healed from them and delivered from them so I can have a more successful future a more successful marriage and being a more successful mother, you know, individual all together. So that's one book. Ooh, a little intriguing. That is intriguing. Maybe, <laughs> um, maybe I need to bring you back on a podcast where we can do like a book discussion on that. Oh yeah. Of that course. sounds all about, that's, that's self-awareness right there. Being yep. able to, to see our, to see ourselves and, you know, correct some things and to let right. go of things that don't belong mm -hmm. to us. Like, right. ooh, that's good. Yeah, okay. it could just be some stuff that you're carrying that your mother carried and you don't even realize it. Don't even realize it. You don't realize it. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, so pencil me in on the calendar because we may have to. All right, girl. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And last question. When describing the meaning of living your truth, I want you to give me your third word when I give you these two words. Okay. So okay. two words are self-awareness, purpose, and <laughs> self-awareness, purpose. Oh my gosh. Um, and living your truth. Self-awareness, purpose, and being genuine and authentic to who you are. I know I was just supposed to give you a word. I'm sorry. I'm just supposed to give you a word. Authenticity. There we go. Self-awareness, purpose, authenticity. I love it. Because self-awareness and purpose, when you add them together, it equals authenticity. So right, yeah. right. You I gotta be true it. to who you are. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Gotta be true to who you are. Because if you don't be true to who you are, you're gonna be 83 and be mad at the world and blame it on everybody else when God has given you the authority to be who you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Jackie, thank you so much. Thank this you, girl. Awesome. This was awesome. Thank you. Thank you.